Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of the Everything Horror Podcast, and tonight you are joined with me, Paul Dolsky, and we've got an awesome guest tonight by the name Rocky Gray. You may know him as one of the former guitarists, as, as, uh, former guitarists for the band Evanescence, and now he creates horror music. So, I, I, I used to play drums. Them. Oh, drum! <laughs> Why would I think a guitarist then? Well, I'm a, I'm I'm the guitarist in in uh, other bands, so yeah, it's, it gets confusing. Maybe that's I, what I it do was. I don't oh, know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, welcome aboard, Rocky. I uh, apologize Thanks, about man. that. <laughs> no problem. That's all good. Now, just out of curiosity, um, were you on? Uh, the Evanescence album with uh, oh god, br- the Bring Me to Life and Immortal and all that. I forget the yeah. freaking name. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm on the, fa- the fa- Fallen. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, I'm on the the first two records. I, I only played drums on one song on the first record. Uh, that that's the uh, the band version of My Immortal. I play on that song, okay. but I wrote. But I wrote a, a song on there. Other than that, uh, Tourniquet is a, a song that I wrote that that was recorded. And then I played all the drums on the second record. No, nice. but I was with them for 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 forever, pretty much. Wow! Well, that's awesome. And I almost got to see you <laughs> live then with, during the uh, Fallen tour one time in uh, Massachusetts. Oh, nice. So. Yeah, unfortunately, it didn't go through, but uh, I guess that happens in life, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's still a pleasure to actually talk with you, though, so I at you least that know. happens, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You. <laughs> but um, for, for anybody that doesn't really know who you are, Rocky, could you give, like, a brief origin story of, like, how you got into horror? Uh, sure. Uh... Man, I, I've been into horror. I mean, ever since I can remember, uh, I I was watching uh, like Universal Horror, you know, in in the crib, pretty much. Uh, uh, TV growing up was was a big thing at the house, and music was a big thing at the house. So you get those two together, and you get a horror film composer later on. You know? <laughs> so. Uh, but yeah, I, I was always involved in uh, music somehow, and always loved uh, movies. So uh, you know, you just keep going from there, and then you end up in bands, uh, metal bands, and stuff like that. And then uh, you go on tour, and then you wear that out. Then you want to start, you know, moving on to the next next thing where you can be at home more and stuff like that. So. Being a uh, video game and and film composer really comes into play in you know and at that time of my life. So uh, for the last seven years or something like that, I've been doing the game and film scoring stuff, and I can do that from home. So I'm not on tour for months at a time and things like that. So I'm home more. And uh, then I can concentrate on family and and putting out some good music. So that's kind of from there to here. And I must say, uh, you have put out some really awesome music, especially for like oh, thanks, The man. Barn, uh, 1031. <laughs> I, I still have yet to hear the Coast Call one. And um, I know you're going to be doing the the uh, sequel to 1031. So I can't yeah, wait yeah. for that. Um, yes, my only, my only thing was that I saw was how, uh, how come there wasn't any physical uh, rewards for the soundtrack, but digital is okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I really wanted to do that. Uh, it, it, it cost about $300 to do 100 mm. physical copies. And it's like, it's hard enough to to make to the artwork and get, all that to stuff. Get to, well, not even that. It's it's just hard enough to get anybody to even you know put in on the just getting a Blu-ray or something like mm. that. So it, it'd be it's tough to ask for for money for 
um, soundtracks and stuff like that. I mean, I still got some left over from last time, and I only did like a run of a a hundred, I think, of those. And it, it's it's just you got to weigh out the is it worth it? How, how much do, do people want it compared to how much do just I want to do it? I mean, I want to do it, but well, the we, people want it is totally different, I guess. No, I mean, right, people want it, right. but it's just getting them to pay for it. It's, well, not just that, but we've got the digital format now, which is taking over everything. So, yeah, I mean, exactly. And I mean, I I'm one of those people that would love to hold the record in my hand and check out the you know works for a song or if it's all instrumental maybe i'd like to check out the artwork maybe there's some uh liner notes in it about the uh production or the recording or something like you know there's always that fun little uh um, yeah i, I totally agree with you yep yep yeah and Me too. You also especially like, vinyl 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 is, mm. I, I really like that about vinyl i always since i was a kid I I loved vinyl not because I listened to vinyl when I was a kid. I mean, we had vinyl, but I didn't really do much with vinyl. I had cassettes, but I always liked vinyl because the artwork was huge, and I loved the artwork. So, and and that's why I'm still into it. It's not that I listen to a ton of vinyl. I mean, I do. I listen to vinyl, but it's not like my go-to thing. But I love the artwork, so I I seek out vinyl like soundtrack vinyl uh, of like horror movies just because I love the artwork. <laughs> so I, 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 get, I get it, you know, wanting to have it in your hand and just, just look at it see if there's anything cool in there. And the funny thing is sometimes Rocky is like, I'll give you an example. There was one time I was uh, looking for like the Halloween original soundtrack and yeah. And I was looking for a CD copy. Well, upon my researching, I found out that, well, I can spend about $30 for the Halloween soundtrack on vinyl for, and it comes with like a, a couple bonus tracks or whatever. The CD, however, because it's so old, people are like asking 60 80 a hundred dollars for it, and i'm just like let's just go with the vinyl <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so yep. i mean but i do agree with you i like vinyl i myself actually started collecting vinyl just for that reason because of the artwork is so cool and yeah yeah maybe it's not even just the artwork maybe it's the way they designed the vinyl itself with the um, swirls or blood splatter or whatever right. you find. So it's always right. cool to get that and see it. And and sometimes it's cheaper. Like somebody wanting to charge 80 bucks for a CD, you, you might be able to find that in a record store for, you know, 20 bucks or five bucks. I've gotten vinyl for like five bucks before. I think I've got a uh, poltergeist on vinyl for like $5. So, I mean, it just Ooh. depends. I mean, if something is just like, you cannot find this anywhere, you're going to end up paying whatever is being charged for it just because you can't find it. So the price goes up, but, but with wax works and, 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 and Mondo and stuff like that, I mean, things are, are being mu available much more now. And I think that's really cool that it makes it not so rough on, even though it's still kind of expensive, it's not as rough as somebody charging hundreds of dollars because it's hard to find. Mm. That is true. That is true. And not only did you create music for uh, 1031, but you were part of uh, making the film, correct? Or producing it? Yeah. Yeah. I produced it and I directed one segment of it. Now you're going to, are you making one segment or the whole thing again for 1031 part two? I'm producing everything. And I, as of right now, I'm only doing, uh, we're going to have some, some fake trailers on there. Everybody from the first movie is doing a fake trailer. So as of right now, <laughs> I'm only doing one of the fake trailers, you know, like Grindhouse did. 
yep. I love those things. So I thought it would be cool to bring everybody back and and do one of those because everybody didn't have time. Because uh, I was going to bring everybody back and and have them do a whole segment again, but everybody got busy and uh, the people who could do it, it was like I kind of wanted everybody, or we'll just wait till the next one and and on this one get all new people. But I thought it'd be cool if everybody had time to, you know, if you want to do a trailer, it, a minute and a half, two minutes, it'd be fun, and I, I think people would enjoy it. So, so we got we got everybody back, and as of right now, that's the only thing I'm doing as far as directing on it. Nice, and you are actually doing a Indiegogo for it right now, which is um, I forgot to pull it up real quick. But how many days left? are we looking at i think i think there's 18 days left right as of today okay and are you uh anywhere near your goal that you're looking at or are we still kind not of far really. away? <laughs> we're pretty far. i'm trying to get 10 grand and we're not even to three grand yet mm. Yeah, it fact, is quite I hard. I think we're at two two grand yet. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's hard. Yes. Now, what the plan? If the goal isn't met, are you still keeping the money, or are you refunding well, yeah, and trying it, again? Well, well, no. What we got? What we're gonna get is it, it'll go into the manufacturing of the Blu-rays and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just have to continue to fund it, fund the actual production out of my pocket it just makes it i mean it makes it harder on me but it'll get done so but yeah the indiegogo will i mean if we don't get it all then it'll help with manufacturing but what it but if we had the whole thing it would it would help in our definitely in our special effects department because that's where everybody runs into spending the most money is getting good you know, practical effects and things like that. That's man, that, that's oh, yeah. all your money right there. Oh yeah, but it's worth it in the end, in my opinion. Practical Absolutely. effects beats CGI in any film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but there is some films that do require that CGI, but as long as it's done right too, because you know we don't yeah. want it yeah. to look too fake and we need it believable but if you have just the right amount of cgi and get away with it then that's just you know then you did your job which was fool the audience so right and and sometimes it's a mix of both that it to sell the effect the best a lot of times it's a composite of a practical effects and some cg to kind of give the best effect and that's mm. coming from like Rick Baker. Rick Baker says the same thing. So I'm I'm with him on that. And uh, uh, Greg Nicotero would be on board with that as well. Because if you look at Walking Dead, every everything is a mix of practical and CG effects. So I mean, it it sells it a little bit more sometimes if you're able to mix it uh, if it's done right. Obviously, it can. Obviously, it can yeah. be badly done, but <laughs> you can do you can do practical bad too. So, <laughs> well, another thing that I've noticed recently, I don't know if you caught on to it, but I've noticed with some uh, projects that are trying to make fun to help keep the production going, what they'll do is they'll start to create different campaigns every other month or so. And it's just to help continue to receive funds. Like, I've seen two projects do it. And I've seen it for uh, Beetlejuice documentary. And I've seen it for a recent documentary where we actually interviewed the guy for a upcoming documentary called The History of Metal and Horror. And oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen stuff about that. Yeah, and that guy has created three different campaigns, if memory serves me correct. And Beetlejuice ha uh, documentary has also created three 
if not more. I know they've been on Indiegogo, and they've also been on Kickstarter. So you could always do something like that to help with fun. Right on. Yeah, I've n- I've never tried to do more more than one ever. It Usually, it's, help. Uh, it's it's time. It's like, do I have time mm. to do that? Is the thing sometimes? I mean, I have enough time now because uh, we did the campaign so early. Uh, the the very when we did our first one for the first movie, it was for finishing funds because we had enough money to actually film the movie. So we had filmed the movie uh, or started filming already. And then we just needed money to for all of our manufacturing and and uh, and stuff like that because the manufacturing could oh man it could really get into your budget um, depending on what you're getting and we did legit legit uh, replication we didn't do just the duplicated CDs and uh, DVDs and things like that so we we're trying to get the best quality of everything that's why it costs a little more. Because, I mean, you can cut corners and do just duplicated DVDs and Blu-rays, but then you run into trouble sometimes because some people don't want that. They want, they only want replicated Blu-rays and DVDs. Mm. So we're trying to get the, trying to get the, the best we could up front and make it worth your while. You know, slip covers, reversible art, uh, which we wanted to do this time, but, um, I mean, it takes money. I mean, it, exactly. Uh, there's no way we could do slip covers with not even having two grand, you know? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, because, I mean, depending on the artist, that could be like three grand, depending on the artist, of course. And right, then, right. And then to make it, uh, I don't know how much it would be to make it, but we'll just say a thousand dollars, maybe. I mean, this is just like, you know, for, this for, is, for manufacturing, a Blu ray is like. Three thousand dollars for a thousand, something like that. It's it's in that realm somewhere. I'm trying, yeah, I can't that's remember right. The numbers offhand, but it's it's a couple thousand dollars. Yeah, it's like um, shit. I used to have for, for replicated me. ones, not yeah, for replicated okay. ones. Yeah, a friend of mine uh, that was trying to look into doing his own uh, DVD and Blu-ray for his film, which he ended up scrapping, um, like putting it on physical so he just put it on digital but um yeah he was trying to tell me like blu-ray is like i think he said like 250 dollars like per disc or something like that so that would make sense like a thousand is like three thousand dollars or something so yeah but it's, either it's way you look crazy. at it yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> <laughs> now yeah it gets crazy now um besides the making or trying to crowdfund money to help you with your first film there. Um, what other challenges did you face when creating the original 1031? I think the hardest part was just getting everything compiled and everything like going together seamlessly, like making everything fit uh, into one and anthology and, and it not being like jagged feeling like, stories just thrown together they are just thrown together but making them fit properly uh the sequence sometimes is what helps there but i mean the the hardest i mean everything coming together that that can be difficult sometimes but probably the the hardest part was just getting everything in on time it is crazy how long this stuff takes. I started really early this time to try to make sure we had enough time for everything because I'm trying to put this out in September. Um, oh, wow. And Yeah. So I have these guys working on all their projects right now to try to get it done because to get it done right and not put us behind, it's you kind of got to turn it in by July to have enough time to do everything that happens in post. Mm. So, but, but yeah, just getting everything together for the first 1031 was, I mean, it was my first movie putting everything together as a producer and, and I, I enjoy it, but it is stressful. The stress is insane. 
Uh, but yeah, the most difficult part was getting everything in on time. That that was the hardest part. Wow. Yeah, um, when I was interviewing Justin Seaman, he mentioned you about um, you were having trouble with, I think it was like selling or like getting orders and shipping them out or something. Like it got to be too much out of hand for you. And then you got um, got a hold of Justin to uh, help help you out with it, I think is what. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. That's that's exactly right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, it did get crazy. It got crazy for me. I mean, I was sending out bundles and bundles of DVDs at a time, and the post office was not even thrilled with that at all. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I had to go to two different post offices because there were so many. Oh, and, my God. They didn't want all all of that stuff all at once. So I was I was divvying it up between me and my brother, and I was going to, I, I was driving 20 minutes away to another post office so I could have another post office to go to. And then my brother would go to another one. So, yeah, Holy crap. there was a, a lot. And, and I couldn't do everything like Justin does from home. I'm not set up to do that because his is way more, the workflow is way better. You know, he, he can weigh everything. He can put labels on it all right there and and then have the post office come and get it. And, uh, well, you know, I, I, he was way better. And I was like, dude, help, just do this. Do this for me. <laughs> it sounds so like he, was, he might. He was, he, he, he was very cool about it. Yeah. It sounds like he uses stamps.com. That, that's exactly the way it sounds like right here. But I could be wrong. I don't know what he does, but to be able to weigh that stuff and know what to charge for shipping and all that stuff, that would that that's a whole other thing. It's one mm-hmm. thing to charge like, hey, it's fifteen dollars for a DVD, and then you got to find out how much it is to send it to wherever they are. They might be in Scandinavia somewhere. I have no idea how much that is. So then you got to find that's out true. how much that is. Yeah, which I don't uh, know. <laughs> which um, brings up a real interesting thing um, for Indiegogo when it comes to the shipping. Is that automatically um, calculated, or is that what do we you no, put you, it in? Yeah, you have you have to put it in there. So I got with Justin because he could find out what you know. Uh, let's see, the main ones are. The U.S., Canada, and and it says yeah, it's like U.S., Canada, and the rest of the world. Right. So he's like, here's here's what you want to do for U.S. Here's what you want to do for Canada, and for everywhere else you want to do this, and that should cover everywhere. Because it's going to be a little different, but you charge to where it'll it'll cover wherever they are because you don't know exactly how much it's going to be. And from what he was saying, it's, it's like that in the U.S. now. Like, apparently, I mean, I don't know, but apparently even the U.S. charges according to distance or something now. So I'm just, I'm going with what I'm told on all that. Hmm. Interesting. I know they usually yeah. go by the size of the envelope or box or whatever, but right. I, I did hear that posting, uh, rate did go up so i wonder if that's what it was so hmm, it definitely it went up it went up once while i was doing them on the first movie so even it then just went they up went again up. too yeah so yeah it's even more yeah which is it's, just crazy oh yeah and um you know i work at a place too where i used to ship uh before i changed my job around and I think it would like once every week I would see an update for the UPS app that we use, and it would say something about like like uh, the charge for delivery, which would like I get the UPS gas is what I kept reading went up, and I'm just like, oh my god, like wow, it's ridiculous. And I mean, I know UPS is usually uh 
uh, arm and a leg when it comes to shipping too. But I mean, I guess if you did the, what do they call it? The, the UPS sure post, I think you'd be okay. But I think that also goes by the distance as well, unfortunately. Yeah, that, that, all that's crazy to me. That's why I don't even want to, I don't want to mess with it. So, <laughs> I don't blame you man at all. Takes care of it. <laughs> Sorry, I'll Justin. leave that to the professional. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Now, Rocky, what was what? Um, what are some of your fa- uh, influences when it comes to like the horror genre, as in like I guess making music for uh, the different films that you have, with like I said, uh, Ten Thirty One, The Barn close call and feel free to mention others that I don't remember right now. <laughs> uh, some, some influences, uh, would definitely be, uh, some people like John Carpenter, of course. I mean, that's, that's obvious. Uh, if you're going to do a horror movie, if you're not inspired by John Carpenter somehow, then you might not want to be doing horror movies. So John Carpenter and, uh, uh, Fabio Fritzi and uh, Christopher Young, uh, Joseph Bashara, uh, Tyler Bates, um, guys like that. That's like the top guys offhand. I mean, there's so many more. I mean, I like Danny Elfman. I, you know, I, I love all that stuff. So. Danny Elfman is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like him in his Tim Burton mode uh, mm. the best. Oh, and Junkie XL. I, I like a lot of Junkie XL stuff too. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's that's probably the top guys. Christopher Young, I, I love what he does with the uh, his atmospheres, uh, like uh, the Exorcism of Emily Rose. That's that's an amazing score. Mm. Yeah, I um, I've recently was like. As I was getting into vinyl and stuff, uh, going back to that story a little bit, but it kind of fits into this, is that um, one of my favorite type of uh, movies, anyway, is the old classic films like the Universal Monsters. And I mm-hmm. found out that, like, um, I'm probably going to screw up the year right now, but nineteen the 1931 Dracula with Bella Lugosi, I guess... Mm-hmm. Wow, what was the guy's name? Uh, Philip Glassman? Philip, uh, what a glass? Philip Glass, I think is his name. He, they ended up doing like a soundtrack for that black and white film. And I didn't really know that. Oh, like, until... like he, like he, like he redid the score? Um, I don't know if or he redid the original it. Score? I don't know if he redid it, but I know he, um, they like made the score for it or something like that. Like, I guess it didn't have a score before and now it does kind of thing. Huh. I got to look into that. I did, I did not know about that one. Yeah, I didn't either until one day I was at one of my local vinyl stores and I just happened to see the word Dracula on the front and I'm like, well, hello, what is this? And then I go and take a yeah. look at it, and I'm just like, really? I'm like, I need to check this out. So I, like, took a picture of it and went back here, and I searched it. And, yeah, it said something like um, when they uh, really released it in, it was either 1999 or 2009, they, um, they made the, the score for it. Which would make sense because that's when they started to re-release like the uh, Universal Monsters anyway on DVD. So it would kind of make sense. And then now I found out that like um, Bride of Frankenstein had that score get re- uh, remastered. And now I'm looking for that. <laughs> and yeah, it's I heard crazy. that. So is that, is that the Philip Glass that did Candyman? Boom! It's the same dude. That's awesome. I gotta check that out. Yeah, and there there lies another problem. I can I can just go to YouTube and and listen to stuff. That sucks. <laughs> 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 I 
Philip Glass gets no money for that. Uh, I mean, unless it's monetized. That's that's the only way you can make money off of it. And that had became garbage too. Just throwing that out there too. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I hear a lot about that. I have never gotten into that, but all the soundtracks that I have on CD Baby, they also go to YouTube, and so. Oh no! Yeah, it's like. Well, I mean, it, it's okay because when you watch it on YouTube, I can get paid from that. But I mean, you're making like point zero zero three. Or yeah, zero point zero three cents per view or something like that. So I mean, you know, whatever. I mean, that's <laughs> just the that's the way the world works now. But oh but, yeah, uh, well, well, YouTube ruined a lot of people anyway. I mean, I just had to contact one of my one of my uh, friends who's a director who directed a film uh, last year, and it first premiered on sci-fi for the 31 days of Halloween and it's called no escape room, which I'm going to clarify because, <laughs> because what was funny is when we uh, got together to do his interview, it was the, around the same time that other film called escape room came out. And I just want to say uh, no yeah. escape room and escape room are two different films. I just wanted to say <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I recently um, was trying to find a f uh, the trailer for No Escape Room because I kept talking about it to one of my friends. I was like, oh yeah, I'm pretty good friends with this guy, and this is some of his uh, work. And, you know, I like the way he does his uh, directing, and especially with the, uh, the lighting job that he does. And anyway, point is, when I went to look for the trailer, I also found his No Escape Room uploaded like the entire film uploaded on youtube so oh, i'm just like great. yeah exactly so now you got that bullshit and then um and then of course i reached out to one of the guys who uh produced it and i didn't hear back from him but i did let him know at least that hey uh you know your movie is up there <laughs> so yeah and Man, that's, yeah. that's some lame stuff. And well, what about you, Rocky? Did you have any type of issues when ten, with ten thirty one with piracy? Because I know that's become a big, big problem. I didn't, but I don't seek that stuff out. I mean, being in the music business, I, it just kind of goes with the territory anymore. So I'm like, it's gonna get pirated. Um, uh, just accept it. Uh, or, or I don't know what else you can do. Um, it's just a part of our world now, and that's unfortunate because uh, usually the quality is not very good either. But as long as somebody can see it for free, it's like the care for the quality also goes down, so they don't even care what kind of quality it is. Um, I don't know, man. I I didn't have issues, but. I know the barn did. I know uh, Night of Something Strange did. I mean, I have no doubts that everybody has. Mm. Um, but but what are you going to do? I, I don't know what can be done about it. Well, I do know with YouTube is that if you are the person that owned the film, right, you can actually submit oh, yeah, a, yeah. a copyright claim. But, you know, that that account gets a strike out of three and once the three mm -hmm. strike hit, they take down the YouTube channel, but look how easy it is to just make another account. I just mean, make another it's, channel. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just so, I don't know. It's just so weird and strange. Like, like, um, usually what I do now, like I know I'm running this podcast and stuff, but even, even for me, like, as maybe somebody, well, may, I don't know if you've ever checked our YouTube out, but just to throw it out there, but so an idea popped in my brain once where I was like, well, maybe what we could try to do too is if I reach out to certain people and be like, hey, um, would it be okay to use your trailer on our YouTube channel? And if so, what would you like in the description? Do you want it the same as what I'm seeing here or do you want something completely different? 
And mm-hmm. most of the time I get told, yeah, oh, yeah, dude, go for it. I'd never once had anybody say, why the hell are you asking me? I just right. look at it. Yeah. Why would you want to promote my stuff? Yeah. <laughs> but the way I look at it is I just don't want to, you know, I just don't want to, um, it's going to sound weird saying this, but like take a video <laughs> of a trailer and just upload it without somebody's permission. I'd rather be safe knowing that I asked for the permission rather than just, oh, I'm just going to grab this and throw it up there. Ha, ha, ha. No. <laughs> no. Right. Well, and, I mean, and know that all, all of us appreciate that too. I mean, just, I mean, obviously we want e- everybody who might would be interested to see the trailers. So we, we encourage that, but yeah, just know that that's very cool of you to even ask, you know, if it's, if it's okay. Cause a lot of people don't, they just like, I'm just doing this. Yeah, exactly. So, Exactly, and it's okay. It, that's okay too. But it's just really nice to at least be asked, you know, about it. Well, that's like you, would you, Rocky? Like, I mean, if you had a trailer for Ten Thirty One Part Two, I, I mean, I would be like, hey, uh, would you like me to use it for our channel to maybe help you out or whatever? You know what I, I mean? For like, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And and um, because what what I find really interesting with this is like. You know, I may, I might have subscribers that you don't kind of like, you know, that vice versa thing where it's just like, yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah. And I don't know how many people really think of that, especially when, when a video is only exclusive to one channel, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, yeah. and, um, you know, I'm kind of getting off uh, topic here for a minute, but, you know, like you said, I just have that weird feeling where I'm like, oh, God, you know, if I don't ask this guy and I get a copyright claim, <laughs> I don't want to deal with yeah. this. So, yeah. And you and it kind of goes back to, um, well, you probably heard of it, of the Instagram trying to censor the hashtag horror and stuff. And Yeah, uh, I did. Yeah. And if you don't mind me asking, what are your thoughts on that? Like. Did you have you looked into it at all, or have you just been like I, reading? I've just what? seen what what the reason was for it, and it seems ridiculous. I'm not. Sh- I, there's <laughs> definitely things that could have that attached to it, and I don't think horror has anything to do with that. I think there right. are things out there that should be like, hey, we don't need to even have this hashtag on instagram um offhand Mm. i can't think of what that would be i don't want to say anything inappropriate or anything uh, but there are things out there that maybe people don't need to see a lot of Um, well not uh, not in a censorship way but like i don't hashtag kill babies or something nobody no nobody needs to have that i mean that's one that's just something that's kind of weird but well, I mean, that's an is, example. Well, there is one hashtag that we were talking about the other day too, where um, one one of the hashtag that does not have a warning, and I shit you not, it's literally called "I want to kill myself." That uh, yeah, not, maybe maybe that one. <laughs> yeah, that one does not have a warning, if you can believe that. And then, and then there's another one too, like crime crime scene true crime like dude that's ridiculous shit right there like i don't want to i'm not trying to tell you to go on your phone right now and take a look at this hashtag there listener i'm i'm really trying to tell you like there is much thing worse out there than just a hashtag horror that's trying to tell you that it's not okay to like horror and yeah it's it's ridiculous but getting back on topic though uh rocky is with 1031 Part 2 coming out, what can you tell us about uh, 1031 Part 2? Well, from everything that I know right now of, of the scripts that I've seen, we have definitely some some new uh, some new angles that everybody's trying to go. Uh, there's more monsters in this one. Um, uh, let's see. And it's more... 
there's definitely one that's definitely uh probably the darkest thing that we've done uh so far uh Tory Van uh Buzzkirk he's uh, he he did the uh the short film uh what is it come to me sister mary and this what he's doing for us is this it's it's pretty nuts and uh I'm I'm really looking forward to that and it, it definitely is dark and I like the the direction because we have a lot of fun stuff, you know, uh, and I love that too. But it's cool to mix it up and have some really dark stuff mixed in with some, you know, real fun stuff. So Drew Marvick's on board, and he's, you know, he's doing his Drew Marvick thing. So <laughs> we can kind of expect uh, Drew Marvick to show up. Uh, and uh, we've got Tristan Clay's. Uh, the director of Red Eye, he uh, he has one that we actually went and shot with him. And uh, nice, we, yeah. I went out to Kentucky and and uh, me and one of my partners, we uh, we we shot the movie for him, and uh, it, it was amazing. It was a lot of fun. And uh, his is his is cool. His is a uh, you know this witch curse thing. So we, it gets witchy in that one. So that was fun. Uh, hmm. Now, some trip, trippy alien stuff. I mean, there's, there's, <laughs> there's some crazy stuff. There is some crazy stuff. There. Now, when you were just saying the witch curse, is that the same witch that is on the uh, cover? No. 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 Okay. That 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 is actually Malvolia. She's the horror host. That we have, she's coming back for this one. Oh. She was in, she was in the first one, so she's coming back, and we're actually going to have some more uh, of Malvolia in this one. She'll be hmm. more of our kind of like crypt keeper in this one, where she'll introduce the the stories and things like that. We we we're really trying to you know take it as far as we can with this one, and really give everybody a you know a good time with. Everything we can do. That's why we needed that money. So hopefully we get that money. <laughs> so so we can really, you know, take it to the limit. But, I mean, we'll take it to the limit with whatever we get. But it takes more money to make more monsters. So that's what I've been saying. So hopefully we get more money for more monsters and more blood. So, Rocky, real quick. um just out of curiosity, is uh, if somebody went out, came up to you and said, "Hey, Rocky, what what is your top five horror movies?" What would you say? Oh, uh, right offhand, I would have to go with The Exorcist, Halloween, nineteen seventy eight, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Uh, well, you're, there must be some type of anthology I, that you like, because I mean, you you are how you are making anthology. Yeah, yeah, trick or treat, trick or treat. There you go. Uh, Love yeah, that movie. Yeah, is that five or four? I can't remember. That's four. One more. Uh, one more. Texas Chainsaw Massacre: The Remake. Oh. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's a now, good one. Okay, with no way I was, I, was, I, I gotta ask you then. <laughs> why? What? What? What about the remake that you like so much about it now? Because I like it too. So I'm, I'm just curious. What what do I like about the remake? Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's that's just a very well done and, and well shot. I love the the look of it. The cin cinematography is amazing. Uh, it has a great score, Steve Jablonski. Man, it's just it's cast well. The the uh, do you have any problem with it at all? Awesome. Mm. I don't. I I really don't have a problem with it whatsoever uh, the the whole family's well casted I, I like all the characters Arlie Ermey's amazing very cool very cool I just had to ask because you know usually <laughs> a lot of people don't like remakes and you know I'm somebody that doesn't really like remakes but you know we just recorded an episode talking about Friday the 13th remake for the 2009 to celebrate its 10th anniversary and it's just like you know mm -hmm. that's actually a pretty good remake i mean it I is enjoyed i just it. watched that like 
two days ago. Yeah, we just walked it uh, two days ago, too. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> as we we're about to get ready to do the uh, episode for it, just to do it as yeah. a refresher. So, yeah, I yeah. I I, uh, I know a lot of people bashed on the film, but, I mean, get, come on, give it a break. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's something yeah. different, at least. And yeah, I I really try to to do the remakes film by film because there's some there's some not good remakes and I'm I'm okay with you know it just not being a good movie, uh, but there are some good ones. I think the Last House on the Left remake and the Hills Have Eyes remake are both better than the originals. That's my opinion, but I think they're both better. Hmm. So I, I'm, I'm okay with a film just going, you know what, this is an awesome idea. So we just update it, and I mean, sometimes it just needs an update, and it's just, it comes across better. You can kind of tie some things together that, and the look, the look, and just it, everything feels good uh, with the remake sometimes. So it, to me, they can they can be better. Hmm. I, yeah, just, I don't I, jump on. I don't jump on the bandwagon like some of these people. I just, I just don't. There, well, there is some film that you know have a place in my heart that say, "Please don't touch it." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I understand that. I understand that. Like yeah, um, that nostalgia is hard to. Mm, it's hard to deal with. Like, man, don't touch that. That's a little too. That's a little too close to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, I don't know about you, Rocky, if you heard it, but I heard they're trying to reboot the Universal Monster, and I'm like, oh, please don't do that. <laughs> please no. Yeah, I don't know. Well, but, they, they, I don't, I don't know. I w I'll, I'll check it out if they do. I'll, I'll definitely check it out. I just don't know. I don't, I don't know if they're going to do any better than, uh, like, last werewolf uh wolf man that came out uh that was that was a good one with oh yeah Benicio del toro that, that was a good one so oh, i don't yeah. know if they're gonna top top that i don't see but how they could I, yeah i mean some of these stories like invisible man and all this uh, I, do we need to see in, out any of that i don't know what are your point in a if, if, if they if they were starting with the mummy that that came out with Tom Cruise, they they can just stop right now. Cause <laughs> well, I did not hear that it's, trying it's, to... it's not that it's bad. It's not that it's that bad. It's just it doesn't need to be in the universe, uh, Universal Monsters universe. I, I just don't think so. God, I hope that wasn't one. But I do know they're trying to make the Invisible Man number two, though. Just because you mentioned Invisible Man, I just yeah. had to throw it out there. So I don't know what they're gonna that's do the with that. With but, Depp. Oh god, yeah. um, I could actually maybe see Johnny Depp doing a, a good job, but I don't know with the whole situation going on now, especially him losing his role as uh, you know, Captain Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean. But I don't. I mean, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But um. Anyway, uh, Rocky. Um, so to wrap uh, to wrap it up even more. Um, so what can we kind of see in the future for you that's coming out besides uh, Ten Thirty One Part Two? But is there anything else that is coming out that is on your plate that you can share with us, whether it be in um, film or music? Yeah, uh, I mean, there's going to be continuous soundtracks getting done. We're going to have more movies. I mean, we'll, we'll do another movie next year. I don't, I don't know if it'll be a 1031 movie, but, um, I like doing the anthologies. I, I think it's a good way to, to collaborate with, uh, the other great directors, uh, out there in the indie horror world. So I, I love, you know, being on a team like that. So I definitely want to keep doing some more of that. But, uh, we've got, let's see, Tori Jones, Wicked Ones. Uh, I'm doing a soundtrack for that. Mm. Uh, Brad Twig's Death Board. I'm doing that one. Uh, Zane Hersberger's Force to Fear. I'm working on that soundtrack. And uh, an anthology called Cryptids. Uh, I'll be doing the soundtrack for that too. So all that, all that's 
coming up real soon. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was <laughs> talking to busy. <laughs> hey, that's all you could do, man. And I mean, yeah, man. Justin, uh, Justin did mention something about cryptid, but I thought that was going to be out by now, but like for pre-order or something, but I guess something's still going on. Maybe it's people still trying to edit the film or something. I don't know. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a couple things being, being uh, wrapped up for it, but I think they are still trying to get it done for this year. Uh, last I heard, they were trying to do that. Uh, I've already worked on some of the music for one of the segments. Actually, two of the segments. Uh, Zane Hersberger's got a segment. Uh, Brett Dieger's got uh, a segment. Uh, the Bone Jingles director, uh, Brett Dieger, he has a segment in Cryptids. So I've I've done scores on both of those segments already. Um, and it's it's going to be awesome. There's cool cool creatures and and uh, some cool music. So that that's a good one. That's another great collaboration. I've really enjoyed working with all those guys. Yeah, I can't wait for it myself. It sounds like it's going to be a really <laughs> fun film. And yeah. you got to love the cryptid method anyway with the different type of monsters. But Rocky, uh, for people that want to help you with 1031 Part 2, where can people find it and help you out and where can people keep up to date with you on either social media or there's a website that, where people can see your your blog or anything uh, to help you you know get more views and support for your 1031 part 2 yeah for sure um, uh, I'm on all the social media platforms um, I'm at Rocky Gray G-R-A-Y on everything and uh 1031 uh movie is on all the social media stuff so that's i think 1031 16 on facebook and at 1031 film or 1031 movie on instagram and twitter so that should that should cover everything but if nothing else it, it'll all be over over on uh all the Rocky Gray stuff. For sure. Thank you, Rocky, for uh, your time chatting. It was definitely a pleasure, and um, we'll have to have you on again in the future, and if you ever want to come on to state your opinion and talk with us on horror or anything, just uh, give us a shout-out, and we'll work something out with you. Sounds good, man. It was it was awesome talking with you. Yes, definitely. And um, for everybody out that stayed wide awake and unless you were chilled to the bone um this is rocky gray for you and you better support 1031 part two even if you share or donate a goddamn dollar it all goes to a great cause because you know what indie horror needs your help now and the only way indie horror is going to get noticed is just you speak loud and on that note stay scary everyone